Hey, it's your host, Brittany, and welcome to the Mom Sweat Sanity Podcast, where we talk all things life, health, fitness, kids, relationships, you name it, nothing is off the table. A little bit of just me and a whole lot of knowledgeable guests. So throw on your Lulus to run or to mom, grab yourself a cup of coffee or a glass of wine, and join us as we unpack life's pressing topics and learn a little bit more of the who, what, whys of it all. Or at the very least, get real, share some wisdom, and grab practical tips to help in our daily lives. And sometimes I just say, you know, I'm tired of adulting. I'm tired of learning, but that is all part of it. And as athletes, I think we're more resilient to that. We can kind of take it because, you know, we don't always go for workout and feel great. So it's the same with business, you know, try stuff. It's okay to fail. For me, it was breaking it down into tiny pieces that wouldn't overwhelm my wallet, overwhelm my main, you know, money-making gig. So take it one day at a time and in the current moment. Hey everyone, and welcome to today's podcast. After a little hiatus, May is back, and we are starting it off with an amazing podcast with Kristen Mayer, the brains, beauty, and inspiring woman behind Betty Designs. I am a very proud member of the squad this year. We talked squad, design, some motherhood, and altitude training. Oh, you're just going to have to dive right in. Kristen, it was so much fun getting to know you a little bit more. Everyone else, I hope you enjoy. Thank you for being here, Kristen. I know that you are far more than Betty Designs. And so how about we kick it off with Kristen Mayer. Who are you? What is it that you do? What are you all about? I always start with, I'm a designer, a mom, and then I use the word athlete, but not competitive athlete anymore. But I still like to use that term because I tell a starting line here and there. So I think if you still tow a starting line, you can use that moniker. (laughs) I think if you move your body, you're an athlete. Absolutely. (laughs) I love it. I mean, my real passion is design and being a mom. And those two things has kind of been woven together and how Betty Designs launched. So it's been pretty cool. I love that. What gave you the courage and the inspiration, I guess, to take the leap into Betty Designs? You know, ironically, I think it was more fear, which is why we do a lot of things in sport, but It was a time where my son's father and I, we divorced and I was stuck on my own, never thought that would happen kind of thing. And I'd been working from home, was really enjoying my freelance graphic design career, but it wasn't really going to pay the mortgage on my own. So I was like, you know, do I take a corporate job? What do I do? And I interviewed, I had some great offers, but it required commuting. It required, well, you know, if you can't fit in all your hours, then once your son goes to bed, you need to work until like 11 at night. And I'm like, yeah, no, it's not worth it. So I met who is now my current husband. We got set up, but we were not dating when we were talking about business. He's very business minded. He's incredibly sharp. And he kind of took a look at my shit show. Sorry, I said a bad (laughs) word. And he went... Okay, I don't know what you're doing trying to freelance, but you just need to launch your own brand. And I just started crying because I thought he was being insane. You know, at the end of the day, he gave me a kick in the butt. He broke it down for me because I was in a very overwhelming time of my life. And he showed me that I knew more than I thought I knew in order to start a business. I never thought I wanted to run my own business, even though I was a freelance designer. I love that. I I totally agree. There's such a parallel between fear and courage and why we lead into either or and the outcome of leaning into that fear is the courage to do it and then see through hopefully the success that comes in the end. And I mean, you're the epitome of that. We see that daily in in your inspiration, your designs. Well, thank you. I mean, I wouldn't be anywhere without any of you girls. So I have to thank all of you. It goes both ways. <laughs> oh, it's a brand that is easy to be behind. And with a person like you, it's, yeah, as I said, inspiring. So, I mean, you did start Betty a little later on, as you said. What advice would you maybe be able to offer people in their 30s and 40s that feel like at this time they should know what they have it all together, but throw that envisionment out the window. What advice can you offer to dream big and chase that goal? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you hear people, especially now with what's happened in the last year in the world, I think, you know, people are being at home and they're kind of reevaluating their lives. I talked to someone yesterday who's kind of expanding her business, but, you know, at the end of the day, I think you have to say to yourself, what really is going to make me excited to get up in the morning? And I think that when you start working on that as sort of your side hustle, which is what I did with Betty, that kind of invigorates you in all areas of your life. 
And you don't have to do it all at once. It's not like, okay, I'm going to quit my corporate job and I'm going to go full tilt and invest a quarter of a million dollars and whatever. You don't have to do it that way. And that was one of the things I learned. But the other thing is, it's okay to make mistakes and fail. There's always something disastrous, quote unquote, that happens every year that I go, gosh, I didn't see that coming. And it's a teaching moment, you know, like we say to our kids. It just is. And, I'm, and sometimes I just say, you know, I'm tired of adulting. I'm tired of learning. But that is all part of it. And as athletes, I think we're more resilient to that. We can kind of take it because, you know, we don't always go for a workout and feel great. So it's the same with business. You know, try stuff. It's okay to fail. For me, it was breaking it down into tiny pieces that wouldn't overwhelm my wallet, overwhelm my main, you know, money-making gig. So take it one day at a time and in the current moment. Yeah, I love that. One day at a time is definitely a quote that resonates deeply with me. So couldn't agree more there. Yeah. (laughs) And you did hint on the world that we have been living in COVID through this past year. How have you kept your mental game into the training mode and the fitness side of it with such a year of uncertainty? And I know now you're ramping your training back up for BWR and all your gravel. You know, it was interesting last year. I'm always pretty motivated in general to stay fit, but I have to say I'm wired to have that event goal kind of hanging over my head. That really gets me to the next level of fitness. Mm -hmm. And I like being at that level of fitness. I don't like being, you know, people go, oh, you're doing so much. I'm like, yeah, but I'm kind of just messing around. I have no schedule. I'm not really paying attention to eating as well as I might when I've got an event on the calendar. I don't focus on the weight room, which is something I really need to focus on. So we were riding our bikes a lot. I was running, but I wasn't doing the extra things that it takes to be a strong, like whole bodied athlete during COVID because I didn't have to, I kind of got lazy relatively speaking because there was no event hanging over my head. So it was more enjoyment. It was in the day. We did actually, my husband and I, we have a place in park city. So this winter we actually hung the bikes up for three months Wow! and totally embraced the snow, totally embraced all forms of skiing I've been an alpine downhill skier a really long time. I don't know. Since I was six years old, we're not going to do the math. Really long time. But learning how to, we're skinning up the mountain. We're trying to learn how to cross country ski, which is incredibly humbling to skate ski. I hear you. I tried that this year too. (laughs) So we embraced all of that and kind of let a lot of things go. And also being so isolated ourselves, we just sort of enjoyed the downtime. And when I mean downtime, more hanging out and just relaxing. I found more time to flip through my trend service or the fashion magazines. My son was off at college, which was, you know, empty nest. It freed up a lot of different space in my mind. So a lot of mixed things happening all at once last year. So I tried to maintain some things. Ironically, my creativity soared and I don't really know why, because emotionally and mentally, I wasn't doing that great (laughs) without hugging my friends. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I know. And the time to be able to do that again. Oh, the excitement. Hopefully it comes sooner than later. And as you say, like the mental side of it, definitely there's the mental side, there's the physical side of this whole past year and all of the moods, but I'm glad that you could find the inspiration and the motivation to find some new designs. I mean, you're coming out with some incredible ones, but how did you mentally stay strong? Do you have a routine that you kind of go to for yourself? It's changed over the years. That is the one area I don't set a routine in. I have a routine in a lot of other ways. And depending on sort of where I am, when my son was at home and I don't know, the high school years for me seemed to be the most challenging because trying to get him to focus and keep his grades up while, you know, going through becoming a young man and all of those things was a little bit chaotic. And, I, and I'm an over worrier. So during that time, I found that I had to create a space where every day I'm not, I'm, I've tried to meditate. I'm not great at it, but Headspace is an app that I used during his senior year of high school that helped me tremendously. And I would do it in the morning before I got out of bed, laying down, not sitting up. And it was five to seven minutes just listening to this man's voice. And that was a great thing for me to just kind of ground me. During COVID, I didn't feel like I needed the grounding quite as much because I didn't have as much going on. Just taking more time, like I said, to dive into those creative, inspirational things that I love to do. 
that was more of my focus at that point and pouring my energy into the business. Yeah. My daughter says she uses the terminology folders. So when her brain feels super busy, she has lots of folders open. That's but a good analogy. Years as you, you can focus down those folders, right? Yeah. Maybe you found the inspiration because all those extra folders weren't so open and you had more that were actually like calm and collective. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, and I think also not during the crazy endurance training over the winter, Taking a break, you know, when you're not moving your body 14, 16 hours a week, it's probably a bit healthier. You exercise six to eight hours a week instead. It's all relative. And I think that created more space and a more calm and relaxing setting. But now I'm all jazzed to go back to the old ways. (laughs) I'm so jealous. So currently we're in California. We're kind of hiding down here at our home, but we're from Vancouver, Canada, and Canada is still a bit of a shit show. So... (laughs) We have no races on the docket or anything. Whereas oh here, I'm watching all the girls go off to St. George this weekend. And I'm like, so envious. I'm like, oh, know. you know, not having that sight in mind, because I didn't realize we would be here at this time and the, right. the ability to do so. So I'm so not ready to be <laughs> in that environment. So <laughs> I'm in awe of all of you at that level. And at that peak right now, I'm kind of like, okay, motivating to get my right. body back in shape. <laughs> it has been interesting to watch. And I wonder how I'm I'm going to feel as my event in July gets closer and closer because I've spoken to different athletes and some of the girls and they're like, gosh, I don't remember what it's like to tow a starting line. It's only been a year, but for, for a lot of the people in my life, that was like a regular monthly occurrence. And you kind of get in that routine of being mentally strong. And so there's a lot of uncertainty I'm seeing in my friends. And I don't know, at the same time, they're super thrilled, right? They're jazzed that they're going to get to go out there and participate again and and throw it down. So I don't know. It's a bunch of mixed emotions. I'm curious to see how it's going to go for me as we get closer. All the butterflies. (laughs) Now, actually, speaking of butterflies, where did the butterfly and the skull come from in Betty Design? It's really funny because there's two sides to me. Definitely grew up a tomboy. I wanted to be a boy when I grew up, when I was a little girl, which was quite interesting for my parents to try and explain to me that... That probably wasn't going to happen, but, you know, I was going to play major league baseball. And then I don't know. I always had like this tough kind of get down and dirty with the guys thing. But as I aged and got older and went to college and my, as my father says, I blossomed a little bit, probably joining the sorority had something to do with it. I became more feminine and I enjoyed fashion and being a girl. And so it's those two sides of me. And then with the racing, you know, it was one of those things where it was like, I love to go throw it down and like race as hard as I can. But afterwards, I want to clean up and go to the barbecue or the after party and just like look like a girl. I don't mind looking like a girl anymore. I used to hate it, but I think there's this really neat thing. And I think that's what I found with all of you on the Betty Squad. You're female and you've got this other side of you that's so tough and focused. And it's those two sides. So the skull represents, you know, the tough head down focus and the butterfly sort of the femininity, the other side. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. I think that's great, right? The embracing the feminine energy. A lot of times as women, we're so accustomed to not doing that anymore because we need to, you know, get the kids up, get them off to school, clean the house, get our workout. All of that is very, apparently, I'm learning at the moment too, masculine energy, right? The go, 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 opposed to just the like sit back, relax and take a breath. So Oh, so how expanding Betty, did you kind of open it up and have this idea and concept of a Betty squad and ambassadors for your brand? Where was that vision to begin? So that, you know, it's so funny. None of this stuff was scripted. There wasn't like a whole business plan or this grand plan. It was literally a day at a time in that moment when it all started to come together. But one of the things that was important to me was obviously once I had some clothing that I had made, how am I going to get it out there? Because At that time in 2010, it was a lot of print ads and magazines, which cost, you know, anywhere, you know, some of the endemic triathlon magazines were like $5,000 for a page. I didn't have that. And I didn't, you know, how do you track that? Whereas Mm -hmm. as social media started to take over, that kind of fell into play just in terms of getting the word out. But I thought as an amateur athlete myself, I was so fortunate as a triathlete to have product sponsorships back before social media. And I was not, trust me, some of them I got very early on when I started doing triathlon. I was not winning a damn thing. I still never (laughs) won a race, but I mean, I wasn't even placing in my age group, but 
they used me more of, I was just super excited about the community being out there. I like the social aspect of triathlon and sport in the morning, the before the event, after the event, I just got a rush from it. So I think that some of these brands saw something in me. And so they, they hooked me up and I went, who am I going to hook up? Who might like what I'm doing and be able to have that same energy for me? And so that was kind of what I looked for. And obviously racing a lot at that time, I looked around my local community and it's, it's hard to find the athlete that is serious, but not so serious that there's no personality there. So I looked rather than just for performance was more about how did they carry themselves the morning of the race? Were they nice? Were they welcoming? Or were they jerks? And obviously looks have something to do with it. I'm not going to lie. I mean, and it wasn't like a certain body type or a certain anything specific. It was more like a vibe. That you made you can vibe. see that everybody is a, yeah. everybody is a Betty. Yeah. yeah so it was about the vibe and it made them attractive, if that makes sense. That was how I did it from the ground up. Wow. Well, you have really compiled quite a squad and I really hope that COVID keeps moving along so that I can enjoy to meet so many more, but even just virtually and online, I've been able to meet quote unquote, a handful of the girls and what amazing people. And yeah, they really are the connection, everything that everyone has to offer is so different and so just amazing and positive. And that's what really drew me to Betty designs in the first place. First of all, like I found it in my first Ironman, which was 20, 17 I wore the Sedona kit Love oh, awesome. it. but just being out on the race course and people saying you know go Betty I'm like what is yeah. this all about and it's infectious and triathlon really is a community of connection I feel yeah. yeah and expanding what you have now has just yeah it's been a goal for a while of mine to be on the Betty squad for more than just what it is you know in terms of a product right but to actually meet a group of like-minded people and women and propelling one another is just, yeah, infectious. One of the craziest things, again, not scripting anything, what's really made me so happy is watching you girls for for, for these friendships that are just, they're going to last a lifetime. I mean, I've seen people be in each other's weddings, baptisms, you name it. And it's, I don't know, it's so unique. You know, I believe as women, and I've started to appreciate this, we need our communities of women to lean on. And I didn't find that in my younger years, but as I get older, it's really important to me. I agree. I think that there's almost something different in that for women opposed to men. I notice in my husband, like he doesn't need that connection with people as much as I do. The conversations and it's a different mindset, different shift for sure between the two of us. I don't know if you see that also, but yes, I do. (laughs) Yep. Oh, So where are you seeing next in terms of Betty development? Let's go in that direction. It's interesting because while I want to grow the business and do a bazillion things, I don't want the stress that goes with that. Meaning expanding into six different warehouses of fulfillment centers and having a marketing team that I have to manage and a place I have to go to every day. I will say my forte is not managing people. I don't like it. I'm not good at it. I want to be friends with them. It doesn't work out so well. So I don't know. And I want to just get my work done. So I'm like, you know, I could grow this thing, but what's, I don't want to grow for the sake of growing so that when someone asks me, oh yeah, I grew X percent. That's not really what's important to me. What's important to me is I'm enjoying it. Yes, of course I'm making money that I can pay my bills and have flexibility in my lifestyle. That's why I like working from home. And at a moment's notice, if my son needs me for something, I can go do it. My husband and I can take a, you know, a vacation, not for very long typically, and I'm still somewhat connected, but that's more important to me than making this thing huge. And, you know, when people say a big company, that's a different moniker for everybody. There are some product extensions I'd like to get into in the long term. I dabbled, obviously, in something that's pretty common, which is, you know, yoga and fitness and running, where I wanted to do it a little bit differently. Whatever I decide to do, I have a very unique sort of way I want to do it. Not saying that my tights were that different, but they did bring something rather than just a colored yoga tight to the market. So all these different sports that I do as hobbies... If I could have a Betty thing to wear for every single sport that I do, that would be my dream. And that's a lot of sports. So 
I'd love to see the one for the hill because I am all into that. <laughs> well, you know, I've, that's been a dream for a long time. So I'm trying to work on it. We're going to see how realistic it is in the next couple of years. Awesome. I can't wait. So have you over the years had, so 10 years now, Betty, I guess, are we into 11, yes. year 11? Yep. Have you had one kit that has been your absolute favorite? So this is the funny thing. And I don't know if other designers are the same. I'm betting they are. We get tired of our own stuff. So I work on it and I really like it and I get the sample in and I'm super jazzed. And then I'm really bored of it. That also might be the triathlete in me. And my little bit of ADD, I don't even know if I have ADD, but that's how I, I look at it. There are designs that I look at every year and I go, wow, that one just wasn't so great. I have my least favorites. Mm -hmm. And then I'm kind of an in the moment girl. So I remember last year for the 10th anniversary, I wanted to do the signature X signifying 10 years because we started the company with a signature. I called it the signature. The color palette remained the same, but I changed it up. That was really a favorite of mine for a number of reasons. One, it was nostalgic. I've always been a fan of like a beautiful sky blue. I think that that design showed my evolution as a designer. The first one was a little bit cumbersome, obtrusive, not, I don't know. There was more subtleties in the version 10 that I really liked. That had a lot of personal meaning to me. And then I had a couple tidbits of my son woven into it. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, That's nice and meaningful. Yeah. But I will say this year, our plaid kits are kind of my favorite. I'm loving them. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I really like it. And it wasn't something, I mean, it kind of came to me pretty close to when I really needed to hustle and get it done. But I really, really like it. I think it's a little more masculine and more fashion. I'm not sure. I just really like it. Oh. And so you say that the prior kit had a little bit of your son woven in there. Yeah. So now he's off to college. Is he close by still? Are you able to be seeing each other often or is that a huge shift for you? It's a big shift. He's in Colorado Springs and I'm in San Diego area, but he's close enough. I mean, obviously with COVID, it was hard to see him. I did see him twice. That was the one COVID risk I took times two. You know, the flip side is I want him to be on his own. It's time for him to, and the reason I'm excited he got to go to a campus while there's no in-person classes, it's really important. It's important for his growth. We have a very close relationship, but he's a young man. I mean, he can't be next to mommy all the time. It's time to grow up and I want to see that. He needs to go out in the world and kind of see what he's going to do, what gets him excited. He's had a lot of independence this year and I'm really proud of him for that. So I miss him but not in the way that I think a lot of people who know me thought I would. Uh -huh. I think I'm much more grounded about it. Wow. Well, our son just turned 13. He's our oldest child. And I mean, it's still a ways away, but yeah. I just, yeah, the changes and the shifts in that. And then to throw the COVID year on top of that yeah. would be, in my opinion, very different and stressful. And you're thinking it's going to look like one way. So expectations yeah. definitely were shifted. Yes. <laughs> You know, and it's hard. He doesn't really know, like, you know, I talk about, oh my gosh, when I went off to college, right? He's like rolling his eyes at me, but <laughs> his experience, he doesn't really know what it was supposed to be like. So, I mean, I'm really proud of all the kids who have had to make these changes in their final high school and moving into college. It's a big transitional time for them. And it's been a lot of challenges, but like I said, it's also, I do think it's a great time for opportunity. I really, really do for them. And it it just depends on the kid and what the parents see for their child. And everybody's so different, but I think mine is where he needs to be right now. So he's coming home soon. I won't see him that much because I'm going to go back to Park City and he'll stay here with his dad a little bit because he's got friends here and a girlfriend here. You know, we talk quite a bit. He's very chatty Kathy for a young man. And That's I love nice. it. nice. Have the open door relationship with yes. one another, I think is so important and valuable. It is. Sometimes I know too much and I'm like, you didn't have to tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> so you're back to Park City shortly then. Is that to get into some gravel training? What is next for you on the training docket? Yeah, I mean, it's basically a build until July, which is the first race, July 18th. So I've never really prepared for an event at altitude, but spending three months there this winter, I realize I'm getting better at adapting every time I go. I think it would be fun to throw it in the mix and see if it helps. I mean, honestly, at my age, you're, you're not getting that much better. I'm trying to hang on. That's really the gist of what's going on in my world. Yeah, right. I'm sure you could kick my ass any day. <laughs> it's a weird thing that happens, and it didn't happen until my 50s, but you really go, wow. Things slow down a little bit, but I have a lot of energy, and 
I still want to push what my limits are and kind of overreach a little bit. And so going to altitude, I think will be a fun change. We've ridden these roads here in the San Diego area for so long. And like anything, I get bored. <laughs> yeah, for sure. The same route over and over again. Yes. Oh. Yes. So do you hope going to altitude then coming home? Is that a, like a significant yeah, they, they say advantage? it's a thing. I'm going to be there for about six weeks and we're literally going to fly in the morning before BWR because for me, I've noticed that if I come home, everyone's like, oh my God, you must feel amazing at sea level. I feel amazing for the first workout I do. And then it's a week of not feeling great for me. And I don't know if everyone's like that. I'm definitely like that. And I know the couple of times I went to altitude to race in my triathlon years, I went in at the 11th hour also just to not get that to kind of before your body knows what's up, do your thing and get out. <laughs> So, I like that shock the system a little shock bit. Shock the system. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, as far as, is it going to really, I don't know. My husband's like, oh my God, it's going to be awesome. And I'm like, I don't even know what he's talking about, but I have to think that I'll have a couple more red blood cells maybe for when I'm sucking wind. I don't know. <laughs> At least if you even just think they're there, then, yes. you know. <laughs> yes. So any new kits to come out for yourself for this race? I know that in the past you've yes. always done your, yeah, your own. Well, I have a thing. I have a thing about riding dirt and riding this particular race in white because I think it's really funny. First of all, white kits, I mean, as a woman, you probably can sympathize with me. We don't want to wear something unflattering. And white is not the most flattering color. It's just no, not. but I've seen your kits and you know how to rock that way. So <laughs> you keep doing that. I'll stick I do with my think black. <laughs> you're so sweet. Whenever I see somebody in white, they look phenomenal. And over the years, I've done some white kits and sold them to the public, as you probably know. And I see a woman in them and they look great. But when you stand in your own house, in your own bathroom and look in the mirror, it's kind of cringeworthy. It's like, whoa, OK, <laughs> but it's so sharp on the race course. And I just think it's hilarious that we're going to it's going to be dusty. You're drinking, you know, colored drinks, or at least I am. I'm not going to lie. You've got sunscreen. You know, you've got whatever selves trying to like keep your skin and everything together for that day. And the dirt just sticks everywhere. And oh I don't know. I think it's fun and not a lot. Of, I've always been this person to be gravitating towards not what everyone else does. So, OK, I don't see a lot of white. So, heck, I'm going to wear white. <laughs> I think that that's just inspiring in its own sense. Like, you know, stand out, be you. Yeah, I and, just want to be me. Yeah. Fantastic. And have fun. That's really at the end of the day. So yes, I'm going to do a version of our squad plaid with white. It won't be all white, but there will be a lot of white. I'm also going to be for the first time wearing the cycling skin suit because I love a good skin suit. Nothing moves. Everyone always goes, oh, well, what if you have to go to the bathroom? If you have to go, you have to go. It doesn't really matter what you're wearing. You have to do some undressing. So... I don't know. I love a skin suit. Everything's like held in place. The pockets are really nice on that. So I'm going to go for it. <laughs> okay. You've sold me. I have not really been into the skin suit game yet. So oh, the big amazing. shorts were a new step for me. Were and they? Yeah. Love them. We'll never go back. 100%. I know it's what happens. Yeah, totally. But the skin suits, as you said, looking in my own mirror at home. <laughs> oh, I think they're so flattering on everyone. I really do. And it's funny because back when I raced, I would never wear a one piece. I was also in my mid twenties when I started. So like we raced in bikinis and we were silly. Once I decided to do the Betty thing, I decided to try bib shorts. I'd never worn a bib short either. Now we'll never go back. You're just fussing with it all the time. And I don't know, maybe it's a getting older thing. I just feel held in. It's kind of nice. I love it too, actually. Exactly. That's the way it held in. It just, it's yeah. almost like compression wear without yeah. being compression yes. wear. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, absolutely. All right. Well, we got to get you in a skin suit. That's the I next. know. Okay. Well, I do have one in my cupboard from you, but got to <laughs> put it on. <laughs> <laughs> what is one thing that you can share that people don't know about you? Oh my gosh. You know, what's interesting, probably people that meet me in person in like an environment, like a race setting, or if we have like a Betty camp or something like that, they think I'm super outgoing. I'm actually not that outgoing. I get really excited when I'm in a place, but I'm not the person that's going to walk. I would never walk into like a networking meeting by myself. I'm petrified. I'm not a conversation starter, but if you get me started... I'm an open book. I'm very chit chatty. So I can be on the shy side. I'm also working on my confidence. It's been a work in progress for a very long time. <laughs> 
So I'm not the most confident, which probably goes with the being out, you know, walking out going. So well, you exude confidence. So (laughs) I'm just gonna say that no one would ever guess that of you. And (laughs) it was super easy to talk to you today and so nice to get to know you a little bit more. And hopefully next time it's not through the camera lens and hopefully hopefully COVID allows some more races. Are you ever going to go back to triathlon? So that's funny. No one has asked me that in a while. No, people, when I first decided I was done, and it was funny, for years, my whole thing was I was so into it. I was a full tri geek. I mean, there's no doubt that amateur that was like, you know, I wanted to do well and very serious, but yet having fun. And once I decided I was done, it was literally like, okay, I'm done. And there was no regret. And it wasn't a looking down. People kept saying, oh, you're going to come back next year. And I've only done one Ironman. Everyone's like, oh, you're going to do another one. No, I'm not. You know, I kind of learn my limits. And when things aren't something that I feel like I really want to do, I just don't do them athletically. And that sort of morphed as I've aged. I thought I would stop triathlon right when I had my son, but I didn't. I raced until 2014. So he was 12. I didn't expect that, but I still loved it. So I don't know. As long as I'm loving it, I'm going to do it. I won't go back to triathlon. I do talk to my husband that it would be funny for us to do a local sprint because it wouldn't be a lot of training. Mm -hmm. It would hurt so bad. (laughs) And to see him out there with me doing all three sports would just be such a hoot. So maybe in that capacity, but otherwise probably not. I think that as we age, as we have different life experiences, the ability to say no to things that aren't serving us that we maybe just said yes to for so long because, you know, we didn't know how to say no or that we really shouldn't be doing something. Maybe that ability has come to a point where the no's are like, no, hard no on that one because I'm enjoying this side of life too much, whether that's sport or whether that's family, friends, whatever else. Yeah, I think so. And I think probably part of that was, I held on to triathlon so much because I felt like that was a big part of my identity. And maybe I thought that was all I had in some ways. But I think I realized as I started Betty and really got super involved in the passion behind what I'm doing at Betty, it it kind of changed a lot of things for me. And going through divorce changes you and just, I don't know, as we get older, it's so cliche, but we really, you know, you just learn a lot. You learn a lot. So Like you said, I've had to make changes. Just whatever I think is going to be the best for me in the moment, I try and do it. Good mantra. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you again so much. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope that you enjoyed our conversation as much as I did. I will link everything in the show notes, but to follow along with Kristen, you can find her over on Instagram at Betty Designs and maybe give her a little race love for her Belgian waffle ride in San Diego this July. Tune in again, and please, if you have a few moments, rate, review, and subscribe on any of your listening platforms. Thanks so much. If you enjoyed today's episode, please be sure to share it. See you next week. You can find me on Instagram at MomSweatSam.